Okay, let's talk about high school mathematics and uh, what to expect when you're taking your high school math courses and how to pass. This is just going to be a quick general video uh, on an overview of high school mathematics and again what to expect and how to pass these various courses. So this video is really directed towards uh, students and parents or anyone else that's interested on uh, high school mathematics tracks. Now this is going to uh, vary if you're in a, a particular state that maybe does Common Core um, as their standards or maybe a more uh, traditional path, but basically it's going to be more or less the same uh, topics being covered. So I'm going to uh, get into all that in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, so I definitely know what I'm talking about. I mean, I've been teaching math for decades, and uh, if you are having trouble in math or if you are going into high school math and you want uh, some extra help, well, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. But uh, if, of course, if you're at the middle school level or high school level, which we're talking about here, or eventually college level, so those of you who might be uh, leaving middle school, going into high school, and then eventually going into college, keep my math uh, program in mind because I can definitely help you out. Uh, if you're going to be taking some sort of test like the GED, and some of you in high school may end up taking a GED, uh, so, or certainly like the SAT or ACT, any sort of test that has a math section on it, I can definitely help you out. And if you happen to be homeschooling, you definitely got to check out my full homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics. And I'm going to leave some links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so this is going to be a quick general overview of high school mathematics. So let's go ahead and take a look at our nice little timeline here. Of course, we have the ninth grade year, uh, your freshman year, then 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. So right here, before we even start uh, talk about high school mathematics, let's talk about middle school math real quick. So let's talk about the eighth grade uh, in particular. So generally speaking, uh, when students are in middle school, I'm talking about the sixth and seventh grade, you're taking some sort of class that says like 6th or 7th grade mathematics. It could be named a little bit differently, but somewhere along the line, and it's most typically taken, uh, taken around the 8th grade, you should have uh, a pre-algebra course. Okay, Again, this is uh, generally like an 8th grade level course, so hopefully you have taken pre-algebra. If you have not taken pre-algebra, um, again, you may have covered the things in a kind of formal pre-algebra course because maybe they're calling the course differently, but this is going to be pretty common for most students out there um, taking pre-algebra at the eighth grade level. And really, your high school mathematics journey, in my opinion, starts with this course right here because uh, pre-algebra, it sounds like this is the course you take before algebra, like, and it kind of implies that you're not doing algebra, you're doing something pre uh, to algebra. Well, in fact, this is really your, your first formal algebra course. Okay, so pre-algebra is really algebra. It's just at a more basic level than algebra one. So uh, algebra is going to be such a critical, um, you know, t uh, concept or, or course level throughout high school mathematics. So if you haven't done well in pre-algebra and you have some time before you start uh, high school, let's say you're going into the ninth grade, you definitely want to, you know, find some extra help uh, and prepare because algebra is going to be a lot harder than pre-algebra. So let's go ahead and talk about what uh, uh, most high school students take at the ninth grade, and that would be like an algebra one course. Okay, again, it's going to uh, depend upon what state uh, district you're in, but for the most part, you uh, all students are going to be learning uh, algebra one. Okay, at the ninth grade year. Now there are going to be some exceptions to this. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and erase this right here. So at the middle school, remember most students will be taking pre-algebra, but some students, uh, if they're on a more advanced track could take Algebra 1 at the 8th grade level, okay? So we'll talk about how this track ends up here in a second, but um, this is not uncommon as well. Most middle schools should offer, um, you know, advanced um, uh, courses in middle school, which would be like Algebra 1 at the 8th grade level. So uh, if you're a parent watching this and you're, you know, just kind of looking ahead, you know, keep this in mind. We'll kind of circle back to this here in a second, but let's move on 
for the uh, majority of students what their path's going to be in terms of high school mathematics. So uh, again, we're gonna start off uh, with Algebra 1 as a freshman. And then in 10th grade, uh, just about everyone is gonna be taking geometry, okay? This is a full year high school geometry course. And there's various versions of uh, this course. So depending how well you've done in Algebra 1, you could end up like in a geometry's honors course or like a uh, kind of a uh, mainstream uh, regular geometry course or maybe even a little more basic geometry course. So uh, your grades and your performance in your Algebra 1 is generally going to start putting you on a different track um, in your high school courses, okay? So not everyone in most high schools is just gonna go into uh, one geometry level, okay? If you um, you know got like A's, really, really did well in Algebra 1, you're probably maybe gonna end up like in a geometry honors course. And a geometry honors course, again, it could be called something different or advanced geometry, whatever the case is. Uh, you might be a little bit uh, heavier on things what they call proofs, and it will definitely be a step up than, let's say, the regular geometry. But if you're even, even in a regular geometry course, uh, that's still going to be uh, very adequate for you in terms of college prep. Okay, But just so you know that uh, most high schools are going to start putting you on a different track in the 10th grade. Okay, So don't be surprised if your friend who loves math and really did uh, well is in geometry honors and you're like in a regular geometry course. Now, let's talk about what happens in the 11th grade. So for those students that are like in regular geometry, typically they'll end up like in an Algebra 2 course. But if you were in geometry honors, you can end up in Algebra 2, but you'll probably end up with something like an Algebra 2 honors course or maybe advanced algebra or some sort of course like that. Again, it's going to be a bit of a step up from regular Algebra 2. Okay, So again, most students are going to be Algebra 1, Geometry Algebra 2, but then there'll be those students that are kind of be tracking this way as well. And again, uh, I keep bringing this up. These are general um, kind of, uh, this is like a general overview because your state, your school might be a bit different, but generally, again, you're going to start breaking across different tracks to, uh, depending on how well you're doing in these courses. So let's talk about uh, uh, the senior year here. So if you're in Algebra 2, for the most part, uh, uh, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, this will probably cover your uh, basic high school requirements just to uh, graduate from high school. So in, um, some students in Algebra 2 could end up in pre-calculus, but not all students. Some students could end up in like a business math course or some sort of, or the, uh, some sort of other math course, maybe like statistics. Um, as well, some sort of basic uh, stats course. But these students that we're tracking very well um, will definitely probably end up in like pre-calculus. So out of um, um, these courses, uh, statistics, pre-calculus, business math, uh, pre-calculus is by far the most challenging course. So this is a very, you know, big jump up from Algebra 2. And again, we're talking about an excellent college prep uh a track here. So Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, it's going to set you up very nicely uh, in college to take calculus, okay, first semester calculus. So if you want to become an engineer, a scientist or whatnot, you know, even if you didn't get into geometry honors or advanced algebra, don't worry about it, okay, as long as you're doing pretty well here, you're still going to be on a great track. So uh, this is kind of the typical path, but let's go back and talk about those of you that uh, took Algebra 1 in the 8th grade. Okay, you're definitely on an, uh, on an accelerated track here. So what happens in the ninth grade level? Well, everything just gets pushed back. So you'll end up taking geometry, maybe geometry honors. Uh, then um, at 10th grade, you'll be taking um, Algebra 2 or advanced algebra, some course like that. And then the 11th grade, you'll definitely probably be taking pre-calculus. And that'll set you up uh, for the 12th grade for uh, your uh, calculus, like maybe like an AP calculus or an AP uh, statistics course. Okay, And both of these courses are going to be uh, pretty challenging. And if you're not familiar with AP, that's advanced placement. Effectively, if you do well and uh, uh, pass the test at a certain level, you will get college credits. Uh, for this. So this is kind of this track right here. So there are students for sure that are taking calculus as a senior, but for them to have gotten to this point, 
you know, they will, um, you know, we're really doing well in math in middle school. You know, we're here in the sixth grade, meaning even back in elementary school, they were doing well and they placed into a higher level in, in middle school. Okay, kind of broke out in the same way. Even in the sixth grade uh, mathematics, those students who do super good start breaking off in various tracks, uh, very much like what happens in the 10th grade. So if you're a parent um, or a student and you're at one of these levels and you want to kind of get to this level, you got to be thinking about, you know, where you're where you've been and maybe where you're at in terms of, you know, um, how well you do in math at each one of these levels definitely has a domino effect of where you end up, okay? But again, the normal track is, is perfectly fine as well. Let's talk about a couple of key things that uh, go on in high school um, uh, mathematics. Uh, so like at the 10th grade, okay, uh, most students start taking a test like the PSAT. So it's like a practice SAT test. And then uh, as an 11th grade um, junior, you'll definitely start taking the SAT or ACT. Most students do. You definitely have to have uh, completed the SAT or ACT if you're going to college as a uh, senior. Not all, this this test here now is kind of optional for some colleges, but I would say the vast majority of students are going to be taking uh, these uh, tests, you know, in the 11th grade and definitely in the 12th grade. And it's important to know that the SAT and ACT test is basically like Algebra 1 and Geometry. Okay, that's like the core uh, material or concepts being covered. So that's why it's so important to complete Algebra 1 and Geometry uh, before you get into having to take the SAT and ACT for these grades so or for uh, your actual college uh, application. So this is kind of generally directed to, towards um, those students that are thinking about college, okay, uh, on a college prep track. But um, again, a lot going on in high school level mathematics. So how do you, um, you know, how do you become successful? How do you do well? Well, the whole uh, idea here to do well in high school mathematics is to be working hard. Do not fall behind, okay? If you fall behind, if you struggle, okay, like let's say in Algebra 1, it's going to have a major um, domino effect for the rest of your high school uh, mathematics, okay? So just because you're struggling doesn't mean you can't turn that around. What do you do to turn, uh, to kind of keep up and turn things around? One, you're going to have to, you know, be a great student, you know, take notes, show up, do all the hard work, talk to your teacher. But if you need additional help above and beyond what's going on in school, find it, you know, find a tutor or maybe use a program like mine to help you to assist you. But don't accept uh, like mediocre math grades, OK, because it's only going to get worse if you didn't do uh, so well in Algebra 1. Algebra 2 is going to be that much harder. Okay, you're going to really, really struggle. So anyone and everyone can do well in mathematics. Some you're going to have to work a little bit harder than others because everyone has their own natural aptitudes. But even if you're not a math person, you can stu still do very well. Okay, But I can tell you right now, um, for those of you that had a tough time in pre-algebra, you're definitely going to have to up your game. Uh, and be ready for high school level mathematics. So if you're a parent watching this, you know, make sure your child is doing some review. Uh, if you have the summer to prepare, start doing things in advance, like go on the offense, uh, be proactive. Don't wait for bad grades to start rolling in because if they struggled in pre-algebra, you know, that's a good indicator that they're probably going to have a tough time uh, in algebra one if things aren't, you know, um, you know, being, if your child's not taking a different approach um, and you're going to have to watch this closely. But what are the rewards of doing well in high school mathematics? Well, there's a ton. Um, obviously, uh, you can pass uh, the AP exams here if you get to uh, calculus as a senior. But even if you didn't get to calculus as a senior and you did very well in Algebra 2 or pre-calculus on this general track, well, you need to be looking at things like the CLEP exam. Uh, the CLEP College Algebra, the CLEP College Mathematics exams, you can get actual co uh, college credit uh, for those courses. Now, it's not calculus or st uh, statistics at the university level, but you can get college credit for college algebra, which is a pretty typical math course for those of you that might be looking at community college. So there's a lot of rewards in terms of gaining credits here. And then, of course, there's things like dual enrollment as well. So 
Is it worth it to do well in high school mathematics? Absolutely. Okay. Even if you're not going into college, let's say you're going into a vocational school, you still have to take placement uh, exams that have math on it. Or if you're going into the military, you're going to have to take an exam like the ASVAB, which uh, has uh, math on it, which is going to help you know determine what job you're going to get in the military. So math is going to be important no matter what um, your plans are after high school. And of course, if you're a parent, you know, you don't want to dismiss math, be like, well, my child's not going to college, whatnot. You let them, uh, you know, learn as much uh, math as possible in high school, okay? Because they may not ever go back and formally study mathematics here. This might be all the math they get for a lifetime. So it's critical uh, to really do well because math is a skill that we use throughout our life. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a pretty good insight on what to expect uh, in high school mathematics. Again, it's going to be a little bit different for what state or county or district you're going to be in. The, the names of the courses might be a little bit different, but generally speaking, uh, this is going to be a pretty typical path for the majority of students out there. Again, if you need help in mathematics or if you got you know, anticipation or maybe not anticipation, maybe anxiety about math, please check out my math help program and maybe even consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I literally have uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of all sorts of uh, math videos, basic math to advanced math, not calculus and everything in between that could help you out. And lastly, if this video helped you out, okay, if this was good information for you, don't forget to uh, smash that like button. But remember, my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your high school mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.